Preseason coverage continues on K-West. This time it's the Westlaco Panthers purple white scrimmage. Hello everybody, Carlos Roberto along with Mike Gonzalez here at Texas National Bank Field at Bobby Lackey Stadium where it has been a busy day for the Westlaco Panthers because it's media day, which means they take pictures, there's some video involved. Uh, there's also purple white scrimmage, which we're gonna be here talking about the Westlaco Panthers. Uh, there's gonna be a pep rally later, a little barbecue for the Westlaco Panthers. So it's all about the purple and white today. Mike Gonzalez, how you doing? I'm doing great. Carlos, the tradition continues here at Westco High School. I know they've had the purple and white scrimmage for a very, very long time here. Uh, it's really the kickoff uh, to their season as far as, uh, you know, getting some hitting done, getting some, some work done. And so I think these coaches are excited. I think the players are excited. And we even have a, a pretty good crowd here uh, wanting to see their, their loved ones and their friends. Yep, a little bit cloudy as well, partly cloudy. The sun peaks out a little bit, then it goes behind the cloud. So it's cooled down a little bit for the Panthers and the fans uh, that are out here. So right now the Panthers are going to be going through a little uh, seven on seven. They just did their warm up, some individuals, and now they'll do a little bit seven on seven, and then they'll go through the full scrimmage so we'll be talking about the Panthers we'll check in on uh, what's going on on the field as well but Mike let's talk a little bit about last year because we have some changes coach Salinas was here for uh, two years took the team all the way to the third round of the playoffs but now coach Stroman who has been a head coach here or a, a coach here at West Buckle High School for 10 years in his 11th year is now the head man yeah exactly uh, coach Stroman uh I think uh, everybody is, is comfortable with him because he has been in the system with, this, with the program for a decade here. And uh, he brings uh, a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of heart, loves the game of football. I had an opportunity to talk to him last week and uh, we sat in his office for about an hour, an hour and a half just talking about the team, talking about football in general. Loves the city of Westlake, loves the community, loves his players. And so, I mean, I think it's just business as usual for the program moving forward uh, and look forward to great things. Yeah, continuity from the previous uh, couple of years. Uh, he was also here with Tony Villarreal, learned a little bit from Coach Tony, learned a little bit from uh, Coach Salinas, and now he's implemented his own system here at Westlaco High School. Uh, the offensive coordinator for the uh, Westlaco Panthers, they do have a new one, and um, that will be Joe Pena, who was the quarterback coach uh, last year. So he's now the offensive uh, coordinator, and and he will be you know, calling the plays. He'll be out there. He's pretty much keeping the same system that Salinas had. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. Uh, he's at, he actually coached at Port Isabel for a few years under Jaime Infante. Port Isabel, for a lot of years, was traditionally a, a running team, the an option, uh, uh, wishbone option offense, and uh, went to Port Isabel, ran the system over there, came over here to Westwick and uh, last year uh, had success uh, with the spread offense. And now he's promoted to the offensive coordinator position. And uh, if anything, Carlos, uh, Coach Stroman told me that he expects the offense to actually be more up tempo than last year. Last year, yeah. All right, uh, well, you know, when we're talking about the West Coast Panthers, you got to talk about the big three Jacob Cavazos, Jaden Cavazos, Peyton Kanab. Those are three players who have uh, been in the system you know, for the past three years. Jacob Cavazos was the 31 6 8 offensive MVP from a year ago. Jaden Cavazos, wide receiver or slot receiver, first team, all district, unanimous, very dangerous also on kickoff and punt returns. And then you have Peyton Kanab. Peyton Kanab, running back. Uh, not only does he run with the ball very, very well, Mike, but he's also a good blocker and even threw for a TD pass last year. So all three of them have been in the system for three years, and now here they are in their senior year. Been here since their sophomore year, Carlos, and if you remember when uh, they played their first year here, uh, Jacob Cavazos and uh, Payne Canaba suffered some injuries that slowed them down there. And uh, I think the key to last year's success for the offense was health. We had a healthy Jacob Cavazos for the full season and into the playoffs. We're able to go into the third round, had an outstanding year. Comes into this season 20 with 20 pounds of muscle. He's ripped. I mean, we know his uh, skills. Uh, he's got great vision, uh, can throw the football. I think uh, that was also a key right there, him improving in uh, his mechanics, throwing the football, finding his receivers down the field. And then Jaden Cavazos has had a solid uh, varsity career, over 50 receptions, 1,000 yards, and nine touchdowns in his uh, sophomore and junior year, and was unanimous first team um, all district in Payne Kanab, 5'10", 200 pounds, Carlos, and runs a 4'7", and will be used as a running back, fullback, tight end. And um, so those three guys, Carlos, are gonna be the nucleus of this offense. You just saw right now Jacob Cavazos throwing deep to uh, Rolando Perones. Big, tall, tied in for the Panthers. Scored a long touchdown there on the seven on seven. So, and then you'll have Rodney Garza as the backup right here, worrying number six, firing the ball down the field. Now, earlier this week, I had an opportunity to talk to 
Jacob Cavazos about this year, now starting his senior year. Came in as a sophomore, played a little bit. Junior year was his last year. He was the district MVP on the offensive side of the ball. So let's talk to Jacob Cavazos, or let's take a look at that interview right now. All right, so here we are with uh, Jacob Cavazos' first day of practice. I know you, you only have half of your first practice done. How does it feel to be out on the field for your third year now? Uh, it's great to be back. Um, it's something we worked for all summer, something we look, we look forward to, something we've put in a lot of work for. So it's good to get back here, and we're just ready to get things going. I know there's a big difference between your, your sophomore year when you're on varsity and now your senior year. What do you think is the, the biggest difference for you? Uh, a lot of coaching goes into it, a lot of stuff that I've developed, a lot of stuff the team's developed, um, a lot of stuff I didn't know as a sophomore that I know now that can help me come and be successful with the team and allow me to be the best me uh, so our team could be successful. How are you being a leader out here in the field? Because not only you know you're the quarterback, you're a senior along with you know with Jaden and with Peyton and the rest of the guys. How are all y'all being leaders here on the team? Uh, experience has a lot to do with it. Um, we've we've been we've been in key situations before, so we kind of know what to expect when things come our way. So the guys that the guys that have been done, been doing this before uh, kind of paved the way for the people behind us, so we can we can continue to be successful in the future. Now, as you've moved on from your sophomore year to your senior year, you've hit the weight, you've gotten a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Do you feel like maybe you're throwing the ball a little bit better, maybe running a little bit faster? Uh, for sure. That comes that comes with hard work and just a bunch of work with off season with a bunch of guys. Uh, a lot of a lot of people go into it. Like I said, uh, our whole team has developed a lot from last year, and I think I think we'll be fine. When you talk about Jacob, uh, he, not only is he you know, great passing the football, Mikey threw for over 1,200 yards, 21 touchdown passes for him, but he also runs the ball very, very nice. When the coverage breaks down or he needs to escape from a tackler, you know, he could take off with the ball, almost 1,000 yards rushing last year and nine touchdowns. Yeah, Carlos, so we were talking about his vision there, and uh, he, he's great at reading the defense there, and he sees an, an opening. I mean, he has the green light to just take off. And, I mean, not only does he take off, Carlos, but, I mean, he makes people miss. And, I mean, we even saw his strength last year. If you remember a game against Edinburgh Vela where there was about two guys on him, and he just kind of pushed him out of the way. So that shows that he's also not afraid to get hit. And that's important for a quarterback there. I mean, this guy can do it all. And so you have the skill. You you have the talent, he's very smart, and uh, and he has the experience as a three-year letterman. Yep, and the skill players, they got plenty of skill players, even some guys that come up from the JV's, Jay Granal also, um, someone that they're gonna count on. We're also gonna talk about KJ Jones during this show as well. But uh, two of the top guys that will see a lot of the action and they'll get their hands on the football will be uh, Jaden Gavassos and Peyton Knopp. I had an opportunity to talk to them also uh, this week. It was actually the first day of practice. We talked to them and here's what they had to say. Peyton, first day of practice is finally here. Look like you bulked up a little bit here uh, over the summer. Yeah, I mean, I, um, last year I just mainly focused on getting big, getting my body right, and then this year just working on my speed, eating better, and uh, just trying to better myself for this team. How, do, how was it out there, first day of practice, uh, handling the football, being out here with the offensive line in front of you and all that? It felt good. I mean, uh, we've been going at it since the spring, so, I mean, it just uh, it felt like we just picked, off, picked up right where we left off, so it felt good being out here with the boys. What is, what is the goal, of course? You know, the goal is always, you know, reach the playoffs, contend for that district championship, and go as deep as you uh, can go uh, in the playoffs. What about your personal goals? What do you want to do? Uh, me and myself, I just want to better this team, uh, do anything I can to help them out, and just reach for that district championship and go as far as we can in the playoffs. Now, last year he was able to uh, throw a touchdown pass. <laughs> is that still in the playbook, you think? Uh, I don't, I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see what coach says, but, I mean, uh, I'm hoping for it. I'm hoping for it. What did you do over the summer to get yourself ready for football? You know, continue to build that chemistry. Uh, us and a couple of the guys, you know, we got together, you know, put some work in together. So we continue to improve our chemistry. And we worked a lot on that this year, really continuing to improve as an offense. Um, I had to talk, to talk to Peyton. He says that we're ready to go, that it's almost a continuation from, you know, the spring, the summer. Like, like y'all can even play a game now, he thinks. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think we're ready. We still got a couple things that we need to fix, you know, continue to work on us and uh, you know our ethics so we right now we're just continuing to build on everything we have right now. What about personal goals? Um, I know you're slot receiver, you like catching the ball, you you know have great breakaway speed once you get out in the open field, but what about the, the punt returns and the kickoff returns? Is there, do you have any goals there? You know try to score, I know you had one touchdown last year, you want to get, try to get at least a couple more? Yeah I mean anything I can do to try to help get, get good field position for my team that would be great. I mean it's another opportunity to make good plays so if I could continue to improve on that that would be great. So all three of those players might going to be keyed to the West Coast Panthers, the 2019 West Coast Panthers. You, you will probably see them playing at the next level. Jacob and Peyton will have to decide, you know, where they're going to go. I know as far as uh, 
Uh, Jaden Gavasos is concerned. He's already uh, committed to play baseball for the UT RGV. So uh, some key players as we watch a little bit more seven on seven and interception thrown right there. So good coverage on the defensive side of the ball for the West Coast Panthers there. Yeah, all three players, Carlos, uh, you're right, can play at the next level. I mean, just the athletic ability playing together for all these years. We're a member of, of the World Series uh, team that went to uh, Michigan uh, back in 2015 as baseball players, kind of bring that experience to the football field and just, you know, play loosely, have a lot of fun, and just let their talent take over. Let's take a look at Jacob here on this play, seven on seven. Jay Granados on the catch. You won't see, you know, full contact of, as far as tackling is concerned. I think on the inside, where you have the linemen and the defensive linemen, they'll be going full speed because they need to start getting their reps in, trying to get a little bit more contact. But as far as tackling is concerned, uh, you probably gonna see just more of the wrap up and just hold them up because uh, UIL rules. And also, yeah. you want to keep these guys fresh. They got a scrimmage coming up next week, so you won't see full contact as far as tackling is concerned. Yeah, the tackling is limited there. We saw Jay Granados in the previous play there. Uh, very good size, made some big catches last year, especially in the playoff game against Laredo United. But, uh, uh, you know, the Panthers have a, a lot of weapons that uh, they'll be able to utilize on the roster. Still working the seven on seven here at Texas National Bank Field at Bobby Lackey Stadium. Let's talk a little bit about the schedule for the West Laco Panthers for 2019. The WHS schedule is, well, it's the same, Mike, except they, they kind of switch sides of you know, where yeah. you're going as far as home and away. So remember last year, they started on the road on a Thursday night at Nikki Road. This game will be on a Friday night. It'll take place here in West Laco against the Road Warriors. Then they're on the road at Ed Couch Elsa. They'll play over there against La Machina. And then they have a PSJA North, September 13th. Followed by uh, Harlingen South at home. It'll be at Harlingen South at Bogus Stadium on September 20th. And the following week, they go uh, at home against Edinburgh Economides. Then the 10th, they'll have a um, bye right before the game against Vela, uh, which always helps because that's going to be one of the top teams in the Rio Grande Valley and that district as well. Then they have Donna North at Edinburgh, November 1st. They're the home team in uh, Dinakobo number eight. <laughs> number eight. I knew you'd, you'd have that one at the top of your head. And then November 7th, they'll be playing on the road at Edinburgh North. Mike, what do you think about the schedule? Well, Carlos, uh, when the new realignment took place uh, um, almost two years ago now, uh, Westlico decided not to do what a lot of other Valley teams did. And uh, a lot of other Valley teams played uh, teams outside the Valley, you know, the San Antonio schools, uh, you know, I know there's one El Paso, Dallas area, you know, to get that exposure. But Westco decided to just play Valley teams, which is okay. I mean, they schedule McAllen Row, a quality uh, program at Cachesa, a uh, neighboring uh, traditional power there. And then they play PSGA North and Harringen South, two teams that went to the playoffs last year, and they went 4 0 in on district, Carlos. And I think that momentum carried into district and had a lot of success there, winning 9 and 1 during the regular season and uh, won a couple of playoff games. Yeah, so uh, yeah, PSJ North is a team I think is going to be very, uh, it's going to be probably the game of the week, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, it, I agree. Because PSJ North won a by district championship last year, almost beat San Benito, and they got some tremendous players that are coming back. Uh, Isaiah Rangel, 6'3 quarterback, has 4'6 speed. He threw for over a thousand, he threw for 1,700 yards, almost uh, 2,000 yards and 15 touchdowns. And then he rushed for uh, 1,300 yards and six touchdowns. And they have a very big offensive line. They have a, a three players over six foot, a 6'3", 295 pound player, a 6'4", 315 pound player, and a 6'1", 280 player. So PSJ North, they're gonna be battling with mission in that 36A, you know, for that district championship, and they're going to be definitely a formidable opponent for West Laco High School on September the 13th. And if I'm not mistaken, Carlos, they switched the uh, schemes and now run the spread like a lot of the teams do now, and uh, almost beat San Benito in that second round game. In fact, they lost uh, in overtime there, so that's a program that could have almost, that could have been in the third round, just like West Laco was last year in the Harnigan South are back. Uh, they erased a five-year drought, and uh, now they have that program going, Coach Ritchie in his third year now. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're talking about opponents that are pretty pretty good quality programs down here in the Valley. And again, if the Panthers could uh, run the table and uh, go 4 no, just like they did last year, they'll carry that momentum into district. And I think that helped the young Panther squad, especially on offense last year, the, the young team, and had success. Yeah, I think they're going to, uh, it's going to be Definitely, uh, Harlington South is going to be much improved. And uh, so is Ed Couch also. Ed Couch also has a new head coach. 
in Coach Navarro. So he's taken over the reins at uh, Ed Couch Elsa. And so La Machina, I think, is going to be coming back. They were down last year, but I, I would say look out for Ed Couch Elsa. All those teams, you know, they're not uh, out of valley teams like you talked about, but they certainly are tough opponents for the West Coast Panthers. How, Edinburgh Villa is going to be, once again, the cream of the crop. We're going to talk more about some of their key players that they have back uh, here in the show. But uh, Villa, once again, it, you know, they seem to reload. They lost a, a couple of key players, but they reload. AJ Sotelo is back and, and some other key players. So they're, I don't know how they do it, but Villa is always in the mix in every sport, Mike, not yeah, just football. Yeah, no kidding. But in, in football, I mean, they have phenomenal athletes. I mean, when they came here last year, I mean, you saw what the Panthers did. I mean, they played four good quality quarters against a Sabercat team that was heavily favored. Came over here, put on a great show, got off to a great start. And I thought the defense played outstanding in that game. Held Vela to a regular season low, 245 yards and 17 points. And if you recall, 75 of those yards came in one play late in the fourth quarter to open the game up. And the, in the end, the Panthers lost by 10 points, 17 to seven. But I mean, I think uh, the Panthers feel pretty good, even with a loss moving forward. They were still able to um, run the table and finish strong and go into the playoffs. All right, well, now we get an opportunity to take a look at the purple-white scrimmage, the portion of the program that we've been looking forward to. You'll see the number one offense versus the number one uh, defense out here on the field as they uh, get ready to go. You'll have the, the white, the Panthers offense will be in white, and the purple Guys wearing the purple jerseys will be on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Stroman said that he will have the ones out there for maybe a series or two, but they won't be there too long. And when you you know you have the same offense that you've been running now for the past three years, this will be, or this will be the third year running this spread style of offense. He feels they know the system and they're, they're pretty much ready to go. So this is an opportunity really for the, the number twos, the number threes, and some of the other kids to get some action out there. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. Because I mean the backups that kind of need to prove themselves a little bit prove to the coaches that hey you know you, you could use me during a game and I can help the team out and as you mentioned you have the player the skilled players like the Jacobs of Jaden Cavazos and the Payne Canobs and some of these other guys out here that have been with the program for the last three years here at the varsity level that just kind of need to get their reps in get a little bit of work in break a sweat and uh, come out of it okay and get ready for next week uh, for the scrimmage all right so here we go coach Stroman blew the whistle and here we go and we, let's take a look at this offense, and it'll be, you'll have Kanab in the backfield along with Jacob Cavazos at quarterback, and they'll spread everybody out. KJ Jones will be a wide receiver off to the left-hand side, and uh, Jaden Cavazos also on the left-hand side is a slot receiver. It's actually coming down to the sideline to hear a play, and they're going to put a jersey. They're going to put a red jersey over uh, Jacob Cavazos. Let's take a look at the a couple of key players back on the offensive line. Uh, the O-line for the West Coast Panthers. They have two starters. These were just sophomores last year that were on this team in uh, Roden Mula Roland Morales and Erasmo Garces. So they will both be uh, very important to this football team because uh, just as sophomores, they were starting, you know, along with, uh, you know, you had uh, Cody Rodriguez who graduated, Fred Salazar also is gone, and Frank Alcón who, uh, you know, of all those three were the other three starters there. But, and they also have some lettermen who were on the team last year who will help fill those roles. But certainly they're gonna rely on Roland Morales and Erasmo Garcés who have all that experience. There you go, three deep, a lot of experience for those two offensive players. They're gonna anchor the offensive line and they're gonna be the leaders of, uh, of the offensive line. Uh, Coach Stroman calls uh, Garcés uh, the best lineman on the team, stands at six foot, 215 pounds. And uh, Roland stands at six foot two thirty five. Will play the guard position, but uh, other guys to look out for, and as far as the Panthers are concerned, is uh, Junior Andrew Reyes. This is going to be a heavy Junior offensive line, Carlos. So even going into next year, they're going to have that experience back. And uh, Andrew stands at six two two twenty. Will play the tackle and was converted from tight end to tackle. Also keep an eye on on Zeke. Negrete, who stands at 6'2", 250, will play the center and tackle position, also a junior. Lazaro Reyes, who's at 5'8", 185, will play center and guard, has good leverage, started against Lake Travis last year, so he has some experience, and uh, will be a senior this year. That was a catch by K.J. Jones. He had the first play that was a run to the right-hand side, off to the left of K.J. Jones, and they get a first down, and here we go. Got also that quarterback. Kanab with the ball right here, gonna run it to the right, looking for a seam, and he's brought down after a short pickup, about five yards in that offensive line. We talked about how, um, you know, they come in with a couple of guys of experience, and there they are moving the ball pretty nicely against this defense. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. And uh, 
you know, as we mentioned earlier, this offense uh, will probably be faster than last year. And I thought last year's offense was pretty pretty fast there. But the great thing about it, Carlos, is that Stroman tells me that they can all, the offensive line, they can all move in this offense. And um, he, he intends to rotate players in and out because they play soft tempo. We have a miscommunication there between the center and the quarterback. Ball comes out a little bit early right there. Certainly things that you're going to want to clean up and work on before you got that first skip, scrimmage. So uh, the center and Jacob will work on that. You know, during this, this is the time to get all those mistakes out of the way. Right. And as we mentioned, Carlos, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a new offensive line, only two back. So, yeah, it's going to be a new center and a few other players uh, playing new positions. Still got uh, Cavazos there. In motion is Jaden Cavazos, Jacob at quarterback on a third down play. Firing down the field, wide open, Beronis right through his hands. But that one was right on the money. But Beronis couldn't find it on time to bring it down. That's going to be a, a nice weapon right there, Carlos. That's going to be a nice connection for Jacob uh, to have there. Uh, stands at 6'4", Beronis. That okay. is. So earlier I got a chance to talk to Roland Morales, who is often one of the offensive linemen. Or actually Juanita Maldonado talked to him, and here's what Morales had to say. I am here with Roland Morales. So Roland, you're getting adjusted to a new coach, Coach Stroman. He's been an assistant coach before, but now he's actually a head coach. Does this signify any change for the program and how are you getting adjusted? We're adjusting good. It's, an, it's a new energy from Coach Salinas. Coach Salinas was a great coach, but Coach um, Stroman, he brings a different energy into the, into the room and brings a loud presence voice when he talks. And it, it's really, it, nothing's changed. I mean, little changes here and there, of course, with the new program, but it's been going good. What has Coach Stroman taught you? Taught me just taught me leadership, and that the biggest thing that I learned a couple days ago was that tradition never graduates, and that hit hard because you know I have a lot of family that's played for the Panthers, and it showed because they've gone through and they've showed me that that just to have tradition and have the and trust the coaches. Awesome, you have a strong offense coming back. How do you think this will benefit the team? It'll benefit the team. We'll be able to be explosive. We'll be able to start fast, finish fast, and be able just to jump on the team before they know what's going on, and be able to. We have a great offensive line coming back, a lot of seniors, a lot of leadership all around from the receivers to the tight ends. Everywhere we have leadership, we're just getting ready for the team, getting ready for the season. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so second down play. First play was a run by Jacob Cavazos. There's a run by Jaden Cavazos. And uh, not supposed to do the, the full tackle, but I'm sure the players will work that out as Cavazos is able to get a first down on that play and the drive will continue here for the Panthers. The good catch there, Jaden, you know, so dangerous, especially when he gets out on the open fields. He has that breakaway speed, pretty quick guy. And I'm sure they'll be relying on that play a lot this year. Yeah, I mean, we also saw him on special teams, uh, how dangerous he can be. I mean, you just give him the ball and then just let him make a play there and then he could, he could turn a five yard pass into a, a 30, 35 yard gain. CJ Good Granados there. Nice uh, run out with, with a nice run there. Also a lot of quickness and speed. Another first down here for the Panthers. As Cavazos has taken all the reps so far here. This is the second series for the purple and white. Cavazos gives this time here to Peyton Kanab right up the middle. Quick whistle as they hold him up. And he'll pick up what uh, maybe two yards on the carry. Yeah, Peyton Kanab is the one that's going to give you those tough yards when you have you know, a third down and one or, or a second down and two kind of situation there. And that works where a guy like Peyton Kanab comes into play there. And it's so physical and so strong. Great Cavazos blocker looking there. to pass down the field against the wind. And uh, that would probably be a flag if this wasn't a scrimmage as they were trying to go down the field to KJ Jones. And the reason for that, Carlos, is because the defender never turned around and, and go for the ball there. And you see K, KJ Jones was trying to catch the ball there, but as a, as a cornerback, as a, as a DB, you got to turn around and try to make a play there, and uh, he didn't do that. So here we go. Cavazos now on a second down play. Second down play. And Cavazos will run it once again. He continues to be our quarterback here in the purple-white scrimmage. Man in motion, that's Jaden Cavazos. Run this time. No, Cavazos is going to keep it, taking his ball up the middle. And a quick, piss, quick, uh, quick whistle when you got the offensive MVP running with the football. 
and they'll give him about five yards right there. I mean, Jay, Jacob is so good at just kind of looking at the defense while holding on to the football and, and deciding those split seconds on whether to give it to Peyton Canab or not. And, um, you know, even at that, even though the defense can penetrate, he'll still be able to haul in the football and make guys miss and uh, get some yards. It'll be a third down play, third down and five for the offense. Cavazos looking, a little bit of pressure coming in. Caught by Jaden, and he'll get the first down. Let's talk about some of the key players in 31-6-8, 31-6-8 players to watch. And uh, A.J. Sotelo, quarterback coming back for Edinburgh Villa. He was a newcomer of the year as a sophomore for the Villa Savory Cats, and once again, he'll be leading the charge against Villa. Yeah, that's right, Carlos. I had an outstanding year. Stands at 5'10", 165, and I had a chance to watch him on video. Has a very good zip on the ball. He's a great great passer, especially when he's in the pocket there. I think the key to stopping him is to make him uncomfortable, but if you give him time and he has a great offensive line, but if he has time in the pocket, he will dissect you. And if you take a look at this list, Mike, you see a lot of guys from Vela. There's another one right there who was a first team all district. He already committed to TCU. Uh, Tyler Bailey, offensive lineman for the Sabercats. Big left tackle for Browns with Vela. I'm sorry, Edinburgh uh, Vela. Edinburgh Vela, yeah. He's big, he's strong. He's arguably the most dominant uh, lineman that we have uh, down here in the Valley. And I mean, other schools have gone after him as well. <laughs> Plays a right tackle most of the time, but can also play guard there and will anchor that offensive line. Offense continues to move the ball down the field here. That was Peyton Knob on the catch as he moves forward and they pick up another first down on that play. We'll continue looking down this list right here because uh, Edinburgh, the Bobcats here, have a defensive player who was a defensive tackle, he had 42 tackles and three sacks. He was the defensive newcomer of the year in Emmanuel Duran. That's right, he'll anchor the defensive line there. Was also named to the All-City football team there at Edinburgh, uh, for the Edinburgh Review there and uh, did a great job. I believe he's a junior, if I'm not mistaken. So had a strong sophomore year, came back, he's gonna be a junior and uh, will anchor that defensive line. On the defensive side of the ball for the Sabercats, look out for he was first team all district as a junior, Juan Mendoza. And then you also have from Edinburgh, a wide receiver, first team all district, Adrian Garza and Justin Cantu, also from Villa, first team all district. So a lot of the key players you see in 31 6 8, we're not talking, we're not, we're excluding the, the West Coast High School, right. and we're also excluding West Coast East. So these are outside of WISD, these are pretty much your top players. These are the ones that got all the accolades last year. Yeah, keep an eye on them all. And uh, Mendoza had uh, 47 tackles, two interceptions as a sophomore, very athletic, also, also a baseball player, Adrian Garza. Um, will probably play a lot of quarterback, was a utility player last year, can also play receiver, running back, very much like uh, Ramsey Vasquez at Westaco East, Justin Cantu, um, helped the team out with his size, stands at 6'2", 190, runs a 4'5", so he has a combination of size and speed, uh, but he's going to he's gonna take over uh, uh, an offense where uh, the loss of Daniel Enriquez to graduation is, is going to hurt Vela a little bit, so they're going to rely on Justin Cantu to step up there. Well, this is the uh, second drive here for the White Squad, which is your offense for the West Coast Panthers. And um, they've been able to move the ball down the first drive. They came out short, weren't able to get the first down on the third down play. And here they are on uh, their second drive, and they've been able to move the ball. Now, you got to keep in mind, they're not going full contact with tackling and all that. But uh, from what they are giving them, they've been able to move the ball nicely here. And there's, I believe that's Verones on the catch to the outside and falls down and um, he's going to be dangerous. And so is K.J. Jones. In fact, K.J. Jones is my X Factor for the West Coast Panthers, uh, an individual who ran track in the offseason. He was the, uh, on long jump. He did the long jump. He was on the relay, 4x100 district champion, district champion in the 200. He's going to be a deep threat for the West Coast Panthers. Uh, Warrior number 14 was flying under the radar all last year. As we see, to Peyton Kanab, this is a screen. And we see this play almost you know, all last year, the screen to Peyton Kanab with so much power and the speed that he has and great blocking by the offensive line, they punch it into the end zone. But let's talk a little bit more about KJ Jones as I continue on with him. Um, he worked extra hard during the summer is what Coach uh, Stroman says, and he wants to play at the next level. So he's really trying to put things together for this uh, senior year. 
and uh, and really be a contributor for the West Coast Panthers. No, no doubt about that. I mean, he does have the ability to do it. As we mentioned, uh, he's a regional qualifier in a 200 meter, so he's a phenomenal runner, very fast. He contributed a lot on special teams last year. Uh, I think he even had a fumble recovery um, in one of the games there. It has is a game breaker, basically. I mean, has the capability of of making a, a, a small run into a, a long run, very athletic. He's gonna pretty much take over the role of Devin Dana last year. You remember Devin Dana last few years uh, did a great job as a wide out with his speed and now uh, the reins go to KJ Jones there. Okay, well Juanita Maldonado had an opportunity to talk to KJ Jones earlier this week and here's what he had to say. So KJ, you're getting adjusted to a new offensive coordinator. What have you learned from this coach? Um, it's basically the same thing we've been running since last season. He's really just and putting a lot of new stuff as far as um, new plays and everything. We've got different uh, different signals and all that. So it's pretty much the same input. We're just adding a little more to it. Awesome, KJ. Last season, the Panthers were regional semi-finalists. What can we expect from you guys this season? Expect better. Just trying to get better every day out here, building a bond. Um, we're trying to build a bond more than just getting better. So we're, we'll be back. We'll be back. You're mentioning building a bond. Has Have these practices helped build that bond? Uh, yes. I, every day we're out here, uh, coaches are focusing more on getting us um, more together rather than just getting better as a as a team and stuff. So they're really just trying to build our bond before we get any better. Than, um, that, yeah, that's that. And how important is it to have a bond like this throughout the season? It's very important because if we don't get along, uh, we're going to have a lot of selfish athletes and it's really going to be me, me, me rather than just us. Like, it's got to be us rather than just me. All right, so some of the first teamers starting to take a break down, a uh, break right now and second teamers coming in. Rodney Garza now at quarterback for the Panthers and running with the ball, I believe right there was Jesse Hernandez for Westlaco. And he's going to be also a contributor to the Panthers. Will be uh, Hernandez, you know, you're going to you're have Peyton Canal, but Hernandez will also be in the mix. Yeah, Jesse Hernandez will be involved uh, with, with the regular starters when they have the two-back system there with Peyton Canab there. So, I mean, they're going to mix things up because Jesse Hernandez has a, has a lot of speed, also has the capability of uh, breaking one. So here's Roddy rolling to his left-hand side, fires down the field, caught. And that'll be close to a first down. For the Panthers, good job by Garza. Garza came in and played uh, during the regional semifinals, with regional quarterfinals, regional semifinals, whatever. The third round <laughs> third game. Round. Yeah. In the Alamo Dome, in front of a packed house. Shoot, yeah, and, threw for uh, a touchdown. It threw what, one or two touchdowns. And, uh, yeah, did an outstanding job. Garza continues. Right up the middle will uh, Garza go with the ball. Garza was on the JV last year, the JV team. Only lost one game last year. It was it was Tuvela. Um, it, was the, it was the Thursday night game right before that Friday night game. So they may have been holding some of their, you know, really uh, some of their plays. You don't want to show too much, even at the JV level. So I think they ran a vanilla offense. Because uh, <laughs> I was at that game. Yeah. They ran a vanilla offense, you know, against Vela during that JV game. But they, they could have come back to win it, but they only had one loss. That's pretty impressive. You know what, Carlos, what impresses me about Rodney is uh, the very little I saw of him last year was that he embraced the moment. He came in, you know, with nothing to lose really, just went in, had a great time. And sometimes when you come in like that with nothing to lose and you play loose and you're not nervous and, and uh, you make plays. And so he made plays for the Panthers in his limited uh, time. And so I think that impressed the coaching staff. Hanks, who was the backup last year, will be moving over to defense from what I understand. Right, he will move uh, from uh, backup quarterback to free safety, why? Because I mean, they feel with his athletic ability and his brains, he's a very smart young man. They feel like he can help the secondary out, especially uh, with uh, the loss they had last year. And uh, his experience playing that quarterback, he'll be able to read the defense more and uh, he can help that uh, secondary there. And uh, I think uh, that's a pretty wise move there by Coach Stroman. Something to clean up here already. We've seen a couple of snaps that have gone on the ground to the quarterbacks that happened to Cavazos with that first team. And now here with the second team, the ball was uh, put on the ground. So some certainly they'll, they'll have to worry. They'll have to not worry about but something to think about. So the big question, for the Panthers coming into the season is, okay, 
we got uh, Western Cold Panthers had pretty much all seniors on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. So when they say they don't have any players returning, they actually do have a few players that are returning that they weren't starters, but they certainly were in the rotation and they played last year, such as uh, Alexis Munoz, who's a defensive line, Elijah Estevanis, outstanding baseball player, also on the defensive line, and uh, Gabriel Gonzalez at safety, one of the fastest guys on this team. Gonzalez was a district champ in the 100 meters, 400 meters, and the 4x400 relay team and he got a silver medal um, in the triple jump. So this is a guy with a lot of speed that's gonna help out that secondary of West Liverpool High School. Played in the nickel package last year and uh, helped them out. I mean, I know the secondary had a lot of interceptions last year and uh, Gabriel was a big part of it. Uh, Alex, uh, Alexis Munoz, uh, Stroman, uh, comparison to Jose Montiel, who played for the Panthers uh, around 2010, had 20 sacks that year, just his ability. And uh, he's going to be the one to replace uh, Jesse Ramos, who was lost to graduation at Laja Estevanis. So, uh, well, we know him. Uh, with the baseball team, there will be the other defensive end. Has some experience last year. He will replace uh, Seth Sanchez. Uh, very athletic, stands at 6'1. But other guys to look out for, Carlos, is going to be 6'3 DB, Adam Echavaria. And we mentioned Devin Hanks. Uh, and then Ronnie Garza, who's quarterback right now, well, he's going to play uh, defense as well. He'll play, he'll play one of the other safeties and will help this team out. Charles Wattis will also help out the team at the linebacker position. And Adrian Fuentes Tank, they call him, right. on the uh, defensive line will also be someone to look out for for the Panthers. So yeah, even though you don't have any starters back, mm -hmm. you certainly got some key players that'll be there for uh, the West Coast Panthers. Yeah, Juarez will play what they call the Mike at linebacker there, gained 25 pounds of muscle in the offseason. And uh, Jesse Perez will play the outside linebacker, will switch from running back to uh, the outside linebacker here. It's going to be a system, Carlos, that uh, I think Panther fans are going to be remember from earlier in the decade when uh, Coach Stroman and Ross Moore were co-defensive coordinators and, and were among, uh, had among the best units year in and year out. Very physical, love to attack the quarterback, like to confuse them, we'll give them different looks there with zone blitzes. And so they're going to bring that back. Well, and, and they had a good team last year with the Camarenas, and you also had, uh, you know, Talk about all these other great players, the two Camarenas, Roy Trevino and um, Cesar Sanchez. Cesar Sanchez. Right. How can I forget Cesar Sanchez? <laughs> but Cesar Sanchez also, uh, who's going to be going to play baseball at UT RGV. Good luck to him. Uh, but I think the Panther defense is going to be good. Also, some of those players that will be coming up from the JV will also help out with the cause for that uh, West Laco Panther defense. But attacking style, remember last year they did have what? Officially 10 interceptions, but I think we, they may have missed a few. We're, we're seeing like more like 14 right. interceptions. Well, when you and I were talking and we were calculating, and we estimated, including the playoff games, about 14, 13 to 14 interceptions. And I mean, the great thing, Carlos, is that just regardless of the scheme, they make plays. And that's what the Panthers are going to need to do uh, again this year. Just yeah. go out and make plays. All those it. interceptions? Yes. 28 sacks and nine right. fumble recoveries. What more do you want from your defense? Exactly. And I think that helped the offense out. And, uh, you know, again, it was a, uh, an offense that consisted more of juniors, you know, with, as far as skill position with Jacob, uh, Jaden, and Kanab at the time, and some of these other players that were juniors. And I think it just gave them confidence. They made their job easier, especially at the start of the season. And uh, now I think it's going to be the opposite, Carlos, where, you know, the offense is going to probably need to carry the team early part of the year and see if the defense can kind of grow a little bit. And then by the time district comes, maybe they'll have everything together. Well, there you see some contact down the field here for the Panthers as Garza throws the ball right in the middle of the field and don't have that young man's uh, name. We're number four for the Panthers, but a good stop. So we're talking about the defense, and there you go, a good play there by the Panthers secondary. And, and Carlos, in those days, they were very physical. They're very, very physical. You remember names like Tommy Chavez, or Bobby Esteban is, Joe Esteban is in the secondary. I mean, those are guys that were all district, all Valley, and even some all state players there. And he wants to bring that kind of uh, attitude and uh, that, those kind of playmakers back. So Rodney Garza still in at quarterback. Jaden Cavazos in the backfield with him. Fake to him, give to Hernandez. Hernandez moving with the ball and slow down after about a one, two yard pickup for Jesse Hernandez. Yeah, you hear the coaching staff there, they're saying, ball down, ball down. Uh, you can see the defenders there reaching for the ball there as Jesse was trying to protect it on the left side. A little bit of a break right here. We had a chance to talk to at least Juanita Maldonado, spoke with Gabriel Gonzalez earlier this week about this secondary, and here's what he had to say. 
Hello everyone, I am here with Gabriel Gonzalez, part of the Panther football team. Gabriel, so last season, the Panther is known for their strong defensive side. 28 sacks, 10 interceptions, 9 fumble recoveries. What can we expect to see from the defensive side of the Panthers this season? I think this season we're expecting nothing less. If anything, we're trying to exceed the expectations that we've set for ourselves and we're trying to get better each and every day. You guys are known for being very strong on defense, but this season there is no returners on defense. Do you think this will affect the team or what can we expect? Although there are no returners, we do have a lot of varsity experience, and uh, including me and a lot of the D linemen. And there's a lot of JV talent that's ready to step up and take their spots. So I think we're going to be good. Awesome. Thank you, Gabriel. All right. So there you go. Gabriel Gonzalez feels very confident about this uh, secondary and the West Coast Panthers defense. And uh, it feels good about what's going on with them. So far, they look good here uh, in this purple-white scrimmage, going up against the number one offense of the West Coast Panthers. I mean, the effort is there, no doubt about that. I mean, they're getting after it. And I mean, this is the first time that uh, they're able to, to semi-hit somebody. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can you hear a lot of yelling, a lot of communication going on with, between the players and the coaches. And uh, you know, that's kind of what it's all about here in the purple and white scrimmage. So here's another series for the number ones. And that's Kanab, and this will be, they start off what, at the 25 yard line. So they're running a little bit of uh, red zone offense. Yeah. They'll do this here. I know that the freshmen in the JV, they're already starting to warm up a little bit. So we'll get an opportunity to see the number ones here and Jacob Cavasso some more. How about number 40 there made a open field tackle on Payne Kanab. That is not an easy thing to do there. You saw Payne Kanab kind of try to stiff out of him, but number 40 uh, was able to wrap him and bring him down. Yeah, one of the classic moments from last year was that stiff arm that Peyton Kanab had against Laredo United in San Antonio. That will that uh, video and that play that he made will live forever. And Peyton Kanab, he couldn't do it there against one of our own players. And so here we go, Cavazos under pressure, takes off running, pitches it out to Kanab. And Kanab able to get a few more yards. And there you see the quickness and the speed of, of Peyton. Yeah. You know, we know we, we see him as a big bruising type of running back. I saw some quickness on that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, not only is Payne Canal big and strong, but I mean, he has some pretty good speed for his size and uh, was able to get the ball. He got the option from Jane, Cava from Jacob Cavazos. But Carlos, did you see Jacob, uh, how he was able to, to feel uh, there was somebody coming from his blind side and uh, was able to escape that and run and then was able to option it to Payne Canal. Yeah, that's one of those plays, you know, we talk about Cantu, he says, don't do it, okay, go ahead and do it, and he takes off into <laughs> no, the no, score. No, 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 yes. <laughs> one of those no, no, yes calls from the coach. Joe Pena is the offensive coordinator for the West Coast Panthers. We talked about him earlier. K.J. Jones says he likes him so far, and there's a good tackle by on the defensive side of the ball. And now some pushing and shoving, which is uh, expected as Kanam. Comes that's up with normal. a little bit of an attitude. Yeah, that's, I think that's we're going to see that in high school uh -huh. football. Yeah, that means they're getting after it. You do that during the game, though it's a flag, and I'm sure the coaches <laughs> will have to tell them to tone it down just a little bit. So we're we'll continuing here with our coverage. Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, Carlos, that like you know what? Even after the whistle's blown and everything's over, I know Payne Kanab and the, the other player they're going to shake hands and embrace and just you know just kind of say good job. I mean, it's just the heat of the moment. Well, that's what football is right there. A little bit of pressure coming up the middle. Not a bad job right there by the defensive line for the West Coast Panthers to get back and put some pressure on uh, Cavazos. And those are going to be some of the some of the key plays players that they're going to look for. They need to find someone to replace that sign. Uh, always put constantly putting pressure on uh, the, the quarterbacks last year in 31-16 throughout the entire season and into the playoffs. If they can find another player, maybe not someone to replace him, but someone who could put pressure on the quarterback, they'll be okay. No, and it starts with the defensive line. I mean, it starts with the, the trenches there and the defensive, they can win that battle. And there was a blitz. You talk about how they're gonna send an extra man, maybe a little bit more aggressive. They send an extra linebacker right up the middle. Good job uh, by that offensive line right there to stop that blitz down the middle and give Jacob enough time to throw the ball down the field. And, and the number two is coming back in. Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, Carlos, uh, I did ask Coach Stroman if he was going to be involved on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, he told me that he was just going to let his coaches, his defensive coordinators, um, take care of that. I mean, he may give his input here and there, but he has enough trust 
in uh, de his defensive coordinators. It's going to be very similar to when he was a co-defensive coordinator. There's going to be two guys uh, working together. You know, there's going to be one. There's going to be one coach working with the defensive line and the linebackers, and, and then the other coach is going to be working on the secondary. Um, I know that Coach uh, Cesar Castillo is one of the guys. Uh, he'll be working with the secondary, I believe, one of the co-defensive coordinators, and it works. I mean, the, the system works because it worked well with Stroman and Ross Moore. So here we go, the twos are now working in once again for the Panthers on the offensive side of the ball. So you got Rodney Garza back in there at quarterback, covered in red. And we'll continue on with our coverage here of the number twos. I know that the uh, JVs and the vars uh, freshmen will be coming out here to play next, but we'll continue our coverage as the varsity is out on the football field as long as possible, as long as Coach Stroman lets us out here. Uh, we're not hiding anything because this place has <laughs> people all over the place as far as the uh, stands are concerned. There's plenty of people watching. He's going to run a screen to the right-hand side, out to Hernandez, and he'll take off running. And knock that out of bounds at about the five-yard line. So once again, the red zone offense being run right here now by the West Coast Panthers. And they'll take a look at the number twos on the offensive side of the ball. And see what they can get going here. They haven't, they didn't score. I don't think the number one offense scored. They may have called Peyton Knob's uh, rush and run a touchdown. Let's see if the Panthers can punch it in here. And that's Garza running. Dual threat quarterback is Garza. You watch him and you'll learn and you'll see him, you know, as the season continues. Um, you know, like you said, he's gonna play a little bit on the, you say defensive side of the ball or as a wide receiver, no more as a wide receiver. Or both, he'll, he'll be used as You'll see he's a very athletic quarterback and moves very, very well and very, very quick. And he also has a heck of an arm. And I'll, yeah, I'll, exactly, Carlos. I was watching him uh, before uh, the purple and white scrimmage as the players were warming up. And I mean, he was throwing the ball down the field. I mean, there was a couple that were overthrown, but I mean, it just, he was just showing his arm and it shows the, the capability that he has. So here we go, Garza, about the five yard line. Passing down the field and off the mark. Let's see what down is it now? We're going to go move on to third down. And, and the other great thing about Garza, Carlos, uh, with, with, uh, some of the people that I've talked to that are close to him, is just he's passionate about the game and he loves football and just he's uh, confident and determined. And uh, and then you want that in a quarterback. You want to have that confidence and you want to have that because I mean that's a, the most important position in football or on the offense especially. And, uh, and he has those uh, tools. Up next for the West Coast Panthers will be the scrimmages. Uh, the scrimmages will be taking place next week. This is your purple-white scrimmage. Uh, so this is a key moment. We talk about key moments during the weeks leading up to the first football game. A key moment is your purple-white scrimmage, your inter-squad scrimmage. And then next week, the Panthers will be at Harlingen uh, at August 16th on Friday at 7 o'clock. They'll be at Bogus Stadium. So that'll be the first opportunity they went up against Harlingen last year. I think they ended up in a the tie or actually losing by one because they missed an extra point or something like that. Uh, but they'll be at Bogus for the uh, scrimmage once again. It might be, you know, more than one team that'll be there, but they'll get their first action. Yeah, they actually beat Harlingen in the by district round last year. So they saw one another in the scrimmage last year over there at PSGA, uh, PSGA Memorial. And then uh, they played each other in the playoffs and the, the Panthers came away with a big win here at home. What a catcher. That's Josh Burkett on the catch for the Panthers, one of the wide receivers, the junior wide receiver for the West Coast Panthers, as he was able to get one foot in bounds and move the ball to what, it looks like the one yard line. So here we go, see what they do with this offensive line and Rodney Garza right there with the calls. At the one yard line. Garza takes off as one of the ends comes around. The other scrimmage at the Panthers will have to move to a Thursday game, and this will be uh, the week before the school starts, the week before the first game on August 22nd. They'll be at Brownsville Veterans for a 7 o'clock matchup. A uh, good quality program down there in Brownsville. We saw what Brownsville and Hannah did last year, but Brownsville Veterans uh, also had a great year last year. I believe they made the playoffs for, what, the last three years or so. And uh, it's a program that uh, got started about 2012 and uh, have made a lot of noise down there in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Keep in mind, things can change, so uh, watch for social media. Also, talk to your kids at home because they could always change as far as the time and location for some of these scrimmages. But right now, that is what is in the books at Harlingen and at Brownsville Veterans 
both of them at 7 o'clock. The two is still going right now. Looks like the ones are getting ready to go back in there one more time to run a little bit of a red zone offense by the West Coast Panthers. We'll try to talk to Coach Stroman here also during this uh, scrimmage. I know he's out there. He's the man with the whistle right now, so he's making sure that the, the whistle is quick and nobody gets hit and knocked down to the ground. He's the man with the quick whistle. And here we go, Garza, looking to throw it. And he finds his man, that's Burkett. He made the catch earlier to move the ball inside the five, and there he is for the touchdown, Panthers from the red zone office. And yeah, we were talking about Roley Berones and his size. Uh, how about that young man there? Uh, good size there too, I would say about 6'2 at least. And I think that's going to do it for this uh, particular portion of the practice, Mike, because, you know, they're back as far as, um, you know, the teams are back together. They might do a little bit of a special teams that will be taking place right now, but we're going to go ahead and start to wrap up our coverage. And, and what do you think so far? You know, we talked about, and, and Jacob Cavazos, Jaden Cavazos, Peyton Knopp talked about how they feel like, hey, we're in midseason form. We're ready to go because yeah. of all the work we did in the offseason. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, we saw Jacob and Jaden and even Peyton Knopp. They got their reps in, did a great job. I think they broke a sweat. Those guys are ready to go. I mean, we play district uh, next week. They could, they could uh, go in and, and do the job there. I think uh, it was very important for the defense, so I think they got a lot of work in. I think the coaches saw some things out there that they can work on moving forward and into the scrimmages. Yeah, we, uh, clean up a couple of things. We'll try to talk to Coach Stroman here if we get an opportunity to talk to him, but uh, clean up a couple of things. You know, there was a couple of uh, snaps where the ball was on the ground, so that's something that they'll certainly work on, and you usually see that at this time of the year. Didn't get an opportunity to go full speed as far as tackling is concerned. We'll get to see more of that next week as far as uh, scrimmages are concerned. Yeah, as far as the fumbling is concerned, that is normal to see, especially in the first week of practice and the first week of the first uh, scrimmage that you have there, especially when you play with a new center. And so they're going to need to work on that a little bit, but that's normal um, in this time. Okay, so let's come on down to the field. The audio working okay, Joe? Because I got the stick mic working over here, and we'll see if we can talk to Coach Stroman. As uh, it's a warm, hot day here at uh, Texas National Bank Field at Bobby Lackey Stadium. Let's get a chance here to talk to Coach Stroman. Coach, hey, uh, had an opportunity here. Y'all did a little bit of uh, had the ones going, had the twos going, and some uh, red zone offense and defense going as well. What do you think? Well, we, we, uh, we came this morning and talked about and we wanted to stress toughness and, di and discipline. That was going to be our, our main focus. And, uh, and these guys did that. I mean, I wanted to be just smart. I didn't want to get anybody hurt, most importantly. But uh, we saw some great things, you know, and we saw some things that we need to work on as a coaching staff. And uh, we'll get that thing fixed for uh, next week against Harlingen. Yeah, I know you, Coach, uh, you're a defensive-minded coach there, and uh, you lost all your starters. You know, some of these guys that got a lot of playing time last year, but just tell me about the union. What did you see from your defense today? You know, they flew to the football, and that's what we were looking for. You know, we were looking for effort, you know, and, and uh, getting to the football with a bad attitude. And we saw some we saw some glimpses of that, but then we saw some things that we need to fix and cover. And But you know what? This is great. You know, going ones versus ones, you know, they're going to expose you a little bit when you face nine offensive guys coming back, you know. And, and uh, But if, if we can just keep on and, and, and scrimmage and, and then go ones versus ones with our offense, it's only going to make our defense better. All right, Coach. We'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go ahead and conclude our coverage here at Texas National Bank Field at Bobby Lackey Stadium for the, this purple-white scrimmage. There's a lot more going on for the West Coast Panthers. they got a community pep rally and a barbecue, but our coverage is pretty much done for now. So for Mike Gonzalez and everybody at K-West, we'll see you next time.